All right, welcome everybody to day two of week fifteen. Should water cool your monitor? Yeah. If they don't, uh, if they don't want to repair my monitor, it is under warranty. Uh, at the same time, having to mail this in and get it back, and maybe it is just as noisy as before. I don't know. Seems like a pain, but I might just uh, pop it open myself and uh, like add like a giant heat sink to it or something like that. Where the where the fan is, so I can't imagine it produces that much heat in any event. Water cooling would be funny though. Water cooling on the monitor, it's it's annoyingly loud, especially now that my computer is completely silent. Having this coming out of my monitor, it's really annoying. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about the media in um, America, but before we do that. Uh, I do want to highlight the fact Flappy Bird is due on Friday, and I also want to highlight some of you guys have made, been making really, really difficult Flappy Birds, and I'm not good at that game. <laughs> so if you want me to be able to grade Flappy Bird, because I need to see that you get points, don't make it so hard I can't get past the first pipe, please have mercy on your professor. <laughs> it's <laughs> one of them I had to retry it like a dozen times until I finally got through the, the very first pipe. It was like it was like this, you know. So uh, have mercy on me, please. Okay, um, and if you have any questions about the assignment, again, um, this class is a very gentle introduction to programming, but you'll see um, kind of how how the things work, you know. And, and um, I'm sure you could find somebody who's done Flappy Bird out there and hit Remix and just submit it. That's now I want you guys to go through the process of building a program. And what we're doing here is teaching you guys how to program by looking at old programs, right? And that's that's one of the best ways of learning is to go through the process, building it yourself. But you have somebody as a guide. You know, you have the website that I gave you as a guide that will walk you through that that process of making it. Um, you know, I learned how to program video games by looking at existing video games and modding them, right? I didn't start from a blank, you know, notepad document and go you know um, I started with a working product and then worked my way backwards from there and so that's um, I'm sort of going about teaching guys the you know sort of the idea of programming in this class the next class after this one would be CSI 40 if you haven't taken CSI 40 um, and you want to learn to program that's where they'll walk you through all you know all the six major tools of programming in detail and then, you know, after that, pretty much you know how to program uh, CSI 40, 41. And, you know, I got my first job programming after that um, as a junior programmer, obviously not as anyone that was independent. Um, junior developers work under senior developers, right? Um, but it was enough, you know, and then, then I got my foot in the door and I've been doing, doing so ever since. Okay, so RNG heavy flappy word. Um, okay, so today our topic is the media. This is a big part of critical thinking. The um, the media in America. Here, let me, uh, for example, New York Post. Have I touched people? Yes. Cuomo says as he's pressed on sexual harassment complaints. Right. So. Uh, from what I can tell, a lot of people only look at the headlines when they um, read a news story, right? This was actually uh, on a website called Dredge Report that just quotes headlines. Let's see if Cuomo is on here. No. Uh, but it just quoted this on there. And I was like, that's a very interesting thing for a politician to say, right, because politicians usually know better, right? Um, so if you were to just look at this headline, what would you guys think, right? There's a picture of Cuomo. There's a girl looking uncomfortable. He's got his hands on her ears of all things, um, right? Just based on this headline, what do you think happened, right? What conclusion would you draw from this? Not like the New York Post is especially reputable but what do you guys think 
What do you think the story says? Let's see the very first line in here. He admitted Tuesday. He's admitting something. Yeah, there's there's been a series of sexual harassment lawsuits against Cuomo. And uh, so uh, this is the latest. So what do you think he is admitting to? You think he's guilty. Exactly. Have I touched people? Yes. So the actual thing. Uh, have I touched people? Yes. He matter of factly responded, you know, matter of factly. I don't even care. I have touched people. And then he followed up. Of course he touched people. I have shook, shaken hands with folks. <laughs> right. So it's a completely different, it's a completely different, um, thing that he's admitting to than what the headline claims he's admitting to. Now the, the sexual harassment claims against him might be completely valid, right? Uh, but the headline is making it seem as if he has admitted that he's guilty. And then, you know, down here he's saying, yeah, of course you touch people. I shake hands with them. I'm a politician. I've, I have touched people before, right? And they had us in the first half, right? The clickbait is real. Yeah. And so, I don't know, let's do this live. Um, I haven't checked Google News today. Let's just, let's just take a look at Google News, you know, top stories. Here we go. Uh, the Biden plan for free community college has the big challenge. Okay, so that's a clickbait title right there, right? What's the big challenge? Click on it to find out, right? And that's the New York Times. My goodness. So let's see what the big challenge is for community college. It has to account for states that widely vary in how much they charge for tuition. Cool. <laughs> it's a lot tougher than it seems. But tuition replacement has a problem. Some charge, some charge more. Okay. So, okay, it's not much of a challenge. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, But her celebration almost ends in disaster. <sighs> Coming this summer, gas stations running out of gas. CNN, yeah, figures. Gas stations running out of gas. I don't know if I should even be clicking on these things because it's going to encourage more clickbaity titles, right? Good luck finding gas. All right, so uh, follow up with me. In August, if there, if we run out of gas at my local gas station, I will very happily admit that CNN was right and I was wrong. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll bookmark this one, okay? We'll bookmark this one. We will follow up in the August or September, and we will see did did my local gas station run out of gas? Okay, maybe it will. I don't know. I am not. Chris Isidore from CNN Business, the reputable CNN news group. Okay. So, uh, the number one emerging property market isn't Texas or Florida. You may never have even heard of it. Which one? Clickbait. Um... <laughs> Kamala Harris and Jill Biden's first 100 Days of Style. Joint statement about the Tokyo Olympics. What does the, what does this statement say, right? Like, all these headlines. This used to be not how headlines were done. Headlines used to more or less say, Olympics are canceled, or whatever, right? Um, but there were websites like BuzzFeed that made... Um, BuzzFeed News, of all things. And, um... And they nominate, um... Nominate, uh, they, they run... BuzzFeed became famous for running clickbait titles. And now, like, you have CNN, you know, running them as well. 
Joint statement. Okay, this is actually from the Olympics. All right, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, they're still doing it. Everybody has to take COVID tests. Everyone's tested daily. Everyone's tested every three days or three days after their arrival. You have to only use Olympic Games vehicles. You're not allowed to use public transportation. You can only eat in limited locations. So, it's a bit odd they're not requiring vaccinations because that's available, you know. And the volunteers at the Olympic Games don't get vaccinations either, which is odd, right? Because the Japanese have been under severe criticism for their handling of the upcoming Olympics, basically trying to push forward the Olympic Games at any cost. They've got vaccines in Japan, but they're just not vaccinating the people working with the athletes. They're just like, wear a mask and wash your hands. So it's a bit, it's a bit odd to me. It's an odd, it's an odd choice. I thought they canceled the Olympics. Nope, guess not. It was five hours ago. So, fears grow of a new Russian power play. This is a Wall Street Journal, right? And so, um, you know, these are major publications, right? And, um... And they, they've been moving more and more to sort of these BuzzFeed, internet news, clickbait titles. Because probably they found that it caused more people to click on them. Right? So, yay, go internet. All right, so, uh, lecture. But uh, I, I am gonna I am gonna follow up on that CNN thing. I'm gonna try and get gas, just my, my usual place. And if we ever run out of gas, I will publicly come back on here even after Canvas has been closed and I will apologize for doubting the wisdom of CNN. Uh, when are they? They're this summer. Uh, so uh, the, the Olympics were supposed to be last summer and because of the pandemic, they pushed them back a year. The Olympic Committee said we're not going to be able to push them back another year because then we're falling into the next Olympic season. So the Japanese government's like, we're doing it. And everyone's like, there's a still a pandemic. We're doing it. And so, yeah. They're going to happen. They're not going to have any spectators, which kind of defeats the entire point of the Olympics, right, to bring in tourism dollars and stuff like that. You still can't travel to Japan if you're a foreigner. Um, if you're a guy Kokujin, uh, you can't go to Japan. You can't view the Olympics. Only Japanese people can view the Olympics. It's the Japanese-only Olympics. That's happening. So... Uh, doubt everything. Yeah, there's so much clickbait out there. The world is wild. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, humans are story-based creatures. Like, what really resonates with us are stories, right? We like to think of ourselves, especially if you're a computer science major, we like to think of ourselves as these rational, logical, um, you know, X and Y or Z, boo, 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 I can figure it out. Uh, but as I think a lot of you have seen from doing the truth tables, like, it doesn't come naturally to us, Right. Um, thinking in terms of like set theory and, and logic. Um, it's something that we can be trained to do, but it's not really natural for us, right? Like it's a lot easier for us to just hear stories, right? If somebody told, tells you a cool story, you know, the story of, um, I don't know, the Battle of Jenkins' Ear where a dude walks in with his ear severed and gets a country to declare war on another country. You remember that, right? And... Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I love history is because of the stories, you know. Uh, nobody, nobody really... Nobody really, you know, loves history for memorizing dates and places and, you know, times and things like that, right? Even historians, like, if, if it's their, like, area of expertise, they know exactly which year things took place. But anytime you're dealing with, like, the War of Jenkins' Ear, like... They're not going to know, oh, it's 22nd of October, it's 1739. No, they don't know. Right? The, um, you know, historians know the order, they know cause and effect, because they, they know it like it's a story, right? So first this happened, then because this happened, this happened. And because that happened, this happened. If, then, if, then. Like, humans work really well with cause and effect and stories and, and drama. You know, you can, you can talk about the history of... Uh, Britain and France as like 
this antagonistic relationship throughout the centuries where France would do things just to undermine England and, and vice versa. And, and uh, European history especially is about shifting alliances and who hates who. And, you know, England and Portugal have been friends since the 1300s, you know. And, like, it's just full of drama and interest and things like that. And, and that's why history is so darn cool, right? Um, Jenkins suffered having his ear severed. There's no evidence that supports the stories that the severed ear was exhibited before Parliament. Ah, no. But it made a good story, right? So I remember that still from my AP Euro days back in the day, right? So, you know, we, we pass uh, myths, um, fables, uh, the fox and the grapes, the scorpion and the frog, Hansel and Gretel. You know, what, what do you think the purpose of these uh, La Llorona, right? Do you guys know the story of La Llorona? I'm probably mispronouncing that. I took French, not Spanish. Stories resonate more than facts. What is the purpose? Have you, do you guys know the story? So, uh, she drowns her children in a river, um, consumed by guilt, she drowns herself as well. She becomes a ghost, and basically, uh, the way that it's told to a lot of kids is like, if you're not good, La Llorona is gonna get you, right? So make sure you behave, right? So it's a way of, um, you know, you know, scaring kids, I guess, into acting appropriately. Uh, there was a movie... Uh, based on that that came out a few years ago and uh, um, some kids were going to go see Detective Pikachu and they played the wrong movie on it <laughs> played La Llorona instead <laughs> the kids are all oh look at these kids and then they're getting drowned <laughs> Detective Pikachu stop the ghost Uh, to make sure kids uh, don't go near rivers at night. Yeah, yeah that's, that makes um, Yeah, right. So, yeah, the kids, the kids were like, <laughs> what the hell is happening here? Um, so, yeah, surprise Pikachu face. Very good. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, these fables and things, the stories we tell to our kids are ways of passing down values and life lessons and things like that from one generation to the next. Right, the the story of the uh, frog in the well, right, is to look before you leap into the well. Right, so before you commit to something, try to investigate it. Right, which is actually good advice. You know, before you buy a car, you know, go on to Consumer Reports, look up the car. You know, it's look before you leap. And so all of these lessons are they tell things about human psychology. Um, the fox and the grapes. The fox is trying to eat grapes, and then eventually he can't get it. So he says, well, the grapes were probably sour anyway. He walks away. And that's where the term sour grapes comes from. He, it's like if he can't have something, then he decides ex post facto, I didn't want those things anyway. They're probably terrible. And this is something that, um, you know, a lot of people do. If they can't have it, then they convince themselves that I didn't want it anyway to begin with as an ego-preserving move, right? Um, Hansel and Gretel is about, I don't know, not having your dad abandon you in the woods and don't trust strangers, I guess. Um, right, Hansel and Gretel are taken out of the woods by their father, and the father abandons them there. And then they're taken in by a witch. The witch fattens them up so she can kill them, and then they shove, you know, they have an oven, they shove her in the oven and kill her. Um, which really disturbs me that we have a Hansel and Gretel daycare center <laughs> in Fresno. Like, I was looking for daycare for my daughter. And I'm like, who would name daycare after a story of kids being abandoned by their parents and trying to be murdered and fattened by a, like, I don't think I want to send my kid here, you know? Like, uh, you know, it's cool, but no, 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 no. I'm not sending my, not sending my kid there. 
Yeah. So it's a way that uh, it's a way that cultural values are sort of passed between between generations. Okay. So um, if you ever watch extra mythology, um, they actually start with uh, uh, myths are story are not stories that are untrue, but they are. Uh, how does it go? It's not true in the literal sense. Um, but they're how, uh, it's how values are transmitted, right? Norms. Norms are like what you should do, what you should not do. Right. So, uh, it's, it's basically, uh, what you could call a meme. Now, a lot of people think a meme is like a funny image, right? Like a meme is like surprise Pikachu face, right? And surprise Pikachu face is a meme, but meme is a term coined by Richard Dawkins, uh, the famous atheist slash uh, biology person, as a, as a mental equivalent to how genes work. So it is a mental gene that gets passed from person to person as a sort of mimetic virus. And so when you hear something, it's like, oh, you know, and you click share and you share on Facebook, you're spreading a meme. And so somebody shares something on uh, some social media and you share it, and then other people see it and they share it, you have now participated in the sharing of a meme, a mental virus. And these mental viruses spread throughout our culture and change people's opinions on, on events. Like, did you know that, you know, whatever. And so they've been sort of weaponized by the political parties. The political parties now have professional meme makers that generate memes and get people to spread them to try to convince people or how to look at an issue, right? If you think that we can't afford community college for all Americans, then you should know that the U.S. government spends more on air conditioning a year than on, you know, how much this would cost, something like that, right? And then if, if, if you make it funny or, you know, something, then it spreads faster and has more impact on people. And so... Um, you know, a lot of people say that Donald Trump was memed into office, right? 2016, you know, uh, they called it the first meme war, where memers on both sides were releasing, you know, attacks on Trump and attacks on Hillary Clinton. And, um, yeah, and it's one of the reasons why I refuse to share things on social media. I pretty much don't ever click the share button ever. Like if somebody posts something on social media, I don't, I don't reblog it. I don't reshare it as a general principle. And I've, I've been pretty good at sticking to that. I, I don't, I don't think I've reshared anything in years, at least four or five years. And even then, no, I, yeah, I don't remember resharing anything, but, um, sometimes like I'll find a news story somewhere and I'll post it on my Facebook feed. And that happens about once a year when there's a story that I think that people should know about, but I just go and I get the URL for, you know, the New York times article or whatever. And just post, post that on. Okay. Uh, well, actually I wouldn't do the New York times cause it's paywalled. I, I usually don't link paywalled stuff. It seems kind of a jerk move. Okay. We've talked about cherry picking before. Um, cherry picking very common in politics. Um, right. Uh, okay, so topic today is manufacturing consent. Like I said, we're talking about the media today. I only share to close friends, but don't do politics. Yeah. Um, some memes really are viruses. Like now I spot the Among Us guy everywhere and there's a red and white rectangle. Among Us. Mm. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a MIT linguist named Noam Chomsky who, uh, uh, is actually really important in computer science. Um, there's something called Chomsky Normal Form that if you go on to become a junior, you'll learn about. But it's not really about computer science. It's a, it's a way of describing language. So Chomsky Normal Form is a way of describing languages, in this case, programming languages, which you'll learn about later in your computer science career if you so choose to take that as your career. Uh, so Chomsky is a big critic of um, a lot of things. He's a dyed-in-the-wool communist. Um, so, you know, make sure you take that into account. Um, 
and he wrote a book called Manufacturing Consent, which got updated after the Iraq War, and even that's probably a little bit out of date now. But um, he he basically says that the media doesn't really report all viewpoints equally, right? He he um, his his big take on it is that if you're talking about major media outlets, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox, um, who am I missing? MSNBC that they only allow debate in sort of a limited space, right? Should we do free co uh, community college or not, right? Not should we do, uh, you know, free everything or, you know. And so his, his take on it is that the American media is sort of beholden to its own economic interests, right? Which it is because uh, other than NPR... And PBS, like, we don't really have publicly funded news, right? PBS and NPR are funded by the federal government and from the donation of viewers like you. <laughs> but, like, uh, you know, all the private news companies are beholden to their customers, which are the advertisers, not you. <laughs> right? They, they make money off the advertisers by getting greater viewership. But ultimately, what pays the bills of a news organization are the advertisers on it. And his his take on the whole situation is that they're not gonna do anything that will anger their advertisers, right? So uh, basically um, they're not gonna run contrary, they're, they're not gonna tell stories contrary to the financial interests of their owners, right? So, like, if uh, the owner of uh, the news station runs a football team, they, they will tend to ignore stories critical of the football team. Um, not like they lost the game, but, like, um, you know, stories that would actually hurt people going to the games and things like that. Things that would hurt their advertisers tend to get swept under the rug. Uh, you can see this with CNN all the time, right? Uh, CNN... Um, um, yeah, so like uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo's uh, brother is a news anchor on CNN, and so during the pandemic, Cuomo was giving news conferences daily, which he won a Grammy for not a Grammy, uh, Emmy he won an Emmy for uh, doing his daily pandemic news broadcasts and uh, Chris Cuomo, his brother, was interviewing him and they're like, oh, like, who does mom love more and stuff like that, and then when all these sexual harassment allegations against Andrew Cuomo came out Dead silence, you know, like, and Chris Cuomo was like, yeah, I just can't talk about my brother. It wouldn't be ethical for me to comment on, you know. And so the way that the way that news organizations can filter these things is simply by not talking about them. Like, they don't have to lie about it. They simply don't talk about it. Talk about other things. There's lots of things out there in the world to talk about. You just find a different topic to talk about. And by doing so, you can filter and scrub the news feed of things that are contrary to your interests, right? So um, Chomsky's take, and again, whether or not I agree with him, I don't know, but this is his take, is that in general, news stations will, news stations will not run stories contrary to the financial interests of the owners, contrary to the financial interests of the advertisers, because guess what? They'll stop advertising with you. If you do an expose on um, Crocs, you know, those ugly plastic shoes, right? Let's say that Crocs, buys a million dollars of advertising on ABC a year. And ABC runs an expose on how crocs are made by, uh, I don't know, actually killing crocodiles and killing endangered species. And they process them into these horrendous, ugly shoes. Uh, crocs, they're going to be like, uh, screw you guys. And they're going to pull the plug on their advertising, right? And so they just don't do it. Do an expose on somebody else. Do them on Uggs. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um... Yeah, uh, a, a, a the Harvey Weinstein thing. Like you, you guys all heard about Harvey Weinstein, right? The the Hollywood producer that um, is in jail right now for uh, uh, being sort of a serial abuser and uh, just all around horrible person, right? Um, this was well known in Hollywood for years, right? And um, 
the New York Times tried running a story on Weinstein, allegedly, I should say. Um, people dispute this point, but uh, New York Times was trying to run a story on, the a reporter had a story on Weinstein and his abuses a long time ago. And allegedly, Weinstein sent Matt Damon, the actor, to the New York Times and said, we are going to pull advertising and make your life miserable. None of us will talk to you and none of us in Hollywood will talk to the New York Times if you run the story. And so the New York Times pulled the story. And so Harvey Weinstein was able to get away with, you know, sexually abusing women for another 15 years because Matt Damon allegedly went to the New York Times and put pressure on them, right? And pressured, you know, sources, right? And so in order to get good stories on Hollywood, you need to be able to interview people in Hollywood. And if you have all these actors saying, hey, we won't talk to the New York Times if you run this story on our buddy Harvey Weinstein here. Um, and Harvey Weinstein, of course, could put pressure on them by saying, I won't run you in any of my movies unless you put pressure on the New York Times, right? You want that lead role? Go put pressure on the New York Times. And that's how power politics works, right? Um, the, the media doesn't want to lose their sources. Like, how do you write stories on Hollywood if nobody will talk to you? You know, you're there on the, the carpet and just people walk by and they're sorry, I'm not going to talk to the New York Times. You've been blackballed by Harvey Weinstein, right? And so as a result of that, you know, this serial molester was able to get away with it for another 15 years or so. Allegedly, the New York Times disputes that that's the reason why they pulled the story. So take it with a grain of salt, right? Uh, I'm, the, the reporter said, yeah, I had all this lined up and they yanked it. All right, so... <clears throat> um, scandals that hurt the reputation of the media. Um, so there, there's actually a couple different kinds of flack, but like um, an interesting thing is the kind of uh, the uh, so flack is when people push back against the media, when people get mad at the media, right, for doing for pulling some stunt, then that makes the media look bad, and and so they can be afraid to run a story because of the flack they'll get. But also, flack can force stories to be run, right? So, like, let's say that, um, uh, let's say that a, 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 a news organization is afraid of running a story um, uh, talking about alleged abuses by Mother Teresa, right? There would be so much anger and people writing in, how dare you accuse Mother Teresa, Um that they won't run the story because they're afraid of the pushback they'll get, right? But on the flip side, uh, flack can sometimes get stories to be run. For example, when Bill Clinton, uh, back in the 90s, there was a scandal with him um, kind of playing around with an intern, right, Monica Lewinsky, and none of the media organizations were picking up on the story. All of them were filtering it, right? And so it wasn't until, and this was the first time internet news really came into its own, the story was huge on the internet and everybody was talking about it on the internet and the mainstream media was just not talking about it. They were just filtering it. But it became such a big deal. People were like, why the hell are you guys not talking about this? That it sort of applied enough pressure to the media, they started talking about it as well. And it resulted in the impeachment and then eventual acquittal of Bill Clinton for uh, basically lying under oath about um, his activities with Monica Lewinsky and what the word is meant and relations and what that meant. Politics are crazy or the views of other people. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so then finally Chomsky added this one after the 9-11. Yeah, did anything running contrary to the war on terror get scrubbed? I don't really see that these days. I don't think the war on terror is really that popular these days. <laughs> You know, it was maybe true for about a year, maybe two years. Um, like the, uh, you know, the Dixie Chicks and country music, they came out against the war. And, uh, you know, the uh, Dixie Chicks. So they came out against the war. And so country music, which is very, you know, right wing. Um, they... Do, 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 do. Yeah, there. Um, uh, within, you know, here's the thing. Like, traitors, brave, hero, opinionated, boycott, Dixie, bimbos, shut up, peace, 
big mouth free speech. And so they, they suffered a lot of pushback from not supporting the war on terror. Uh, but they immediately got a, you know, Rolling Stone cover and, um, um, yeah, well, uh, entertainment. Uh, what year is that? 2000. Two. Oh, it's Two thousand three, yeah. So uh, first half of two thousand three, and um, and so you know this is within you know a year and a half of nine eleven. Uh, they're getting front cover magazines, right? Like the whole notion they were, you know, that they were censored is kind of ridiculous because, or or the notion that anything contrary to the war on terror gets scrubbed when you're getting covers of magazines and things like that for speaking out against something, right? Like it's not. You know, it, it may have been true for about a year after 9-11, and then after that, people started questioning it, and it really wasn't that controversial to question. Um, okay, so uh, the, there's this idea called media imperialism. And so media imperialism means when all the media run the same stories or the same choice of stories, then that basically sets the agenda. What are we talking about in society? Right. So we saw that uh, last year with uh, Black Lives Matter. Right. That was the topic we were discussing as a society. Right. Not even that it's a bad thing necessarily. This is just how it is. Right. This is the topic that we're talking about. And then in previous years, it was immigration, um, <clears throat> uh, war on terror. You know, if you want to go back 20 years, um, not quite 20 years, right? 9 11, the 20th anniversary of 9 11 is coming up this year. Um, and, and so when, what happens is that when there's a big story and somebody reports on it, then all the other media outlets follow along. It's, it's like lemmings, right? If they actually work that way, which they don't exactly. Jumping off a cliff, which they don't actually do. Um, but when something breaks, all the media outlets cover it. And they cover it 24-7. They cover it until it runs utterly into the ground. And then something else happens and they all stampede over there. And so what happens is that the national conversation we have about a topic is um, basically set by this half dozen organizations, right? And like nobody was talking about um, Richard Stallman, you know, like what's going on with that guy? There's a lot going on with that guy right now, you know? And you don't hear about any of it in the mainstream media because um, they all chase each other's tails, basically. Like one dog runs ahead of the rest and the other ones chase after him, and then somebody finds something and they chase after him. It's like birds flocking. And and the trouble with this is that oftentimes they're really big, really important topics that just nobody hears about. Right? And so um, I usually do an exercise in this class, like, you know, tell me a major story that, like, just never got any traction in America. Right? All the views and clicks, yeah. Yeah, like... Um, Um, right? Like a lot of people have never heard of Dow Chemicals murdering uh, people, right? Um, so Union Carbide, which is now Dow, uh, had a gas leak that exposed 500,000 people to a highly toxic gas and killed... Um, Somewhere between 3,700 and 16,000 people. Yeah, nobody knows about it. <clears throat> right. um, the whole, uh, yeah, as long as we're talking about India, the whole attack on, you know, the Sikh holy site, right? Um, butchering the last name. Um... Right, uh, Prime Minister of India, uh, who ordered an attack on the holiest site in Sikhism, right, and uh, was then uh, killed by her Sikh bodyguards afterwards, which seems like, um, uh, so, you know, it's like if, if somebody attacked the Vatican, like, I figure we'd all know about it, right, but this was 84, you know, it's not like super long time ago, and, uh, 
uh, led to, and, and the death of Indira Gandhi led to the massacre of lots of Sikh people and like it's a huge it's a huge thing and it's you know an attack on the holiest side of a major world religion and just like no nobody knows of it nobody you know and, and that's just you know how the American media is you know uh, media and news following trends and setting trends yeah both they both follow trends and they set the trends because all of them follow each other then um then it's something called an informational cascade. So an informational cascade happens when one person makes a decision and then somebody following after them can see what decision they made and choose to follow as well. And after a few people have chosen to follow, like let's say um, you're coming up to a fork in the road and there's no sign, right? And uh, you, you have to decide which way you're going to go. Uh, and everybody makes a right you, and you, you're, you're trying to get to a concert out in the woods or something, right? You're just like, these guys clearly know where they're going. I don't. And so you follow them. <clears throat> and then you end up in a dead end and there's all these cars packed in there. And you're like, why did everybody come this way? It was a 50-50 chance. And and the first guy's like, I don't know. I just picked one. And the guy behind him's like, I thought about going left. But he seemed like he, he knew where he was going. And then after that, everybody just followed right off into a dead end. And that's actually happened to me before. Where, you know, I was out in the, you know, trying to go to some concert you know, in the middle of nowhere, and just everybody gets lost. And you think it'd be 50-50, but it's not, because we all follow each other. And so it's both following trends and making trends. When all the media go the same way, then that's what people talk about. And so uh, Chomsky says, despite uh, Fox and CNN sort of being the archetypical right-wing and left-wing media outlets, um, the, uh, the fact, Chomsky says, that they're both large corporate interests that are beholden to their advertisers and things like that and their sources means that they still don't run stories contrary to the overall narrative, right? So, um, uh, Chomsky, you know, being a communist is wanting to see more anti-capitalism messages. And since both of these are at their roots, you know, capitalistic corporations, they're not going to run the stories that he, he wants to see. Right? Um, and then over the years, there have been fewer and fewer companies controlling things like radio, right? Like almost every radio station in America is run by Clear Channel or iHeartMedia uh, Communications. And so local TV uh, and radio have been consolidated, right, into, into very few hands these days. There's not a lot of independent media outlets left. Right? So uh, the major news outlets are also part of what you might call a mega corporation, right? So um, Disney owns ESPN, Pixar, uh, Marvel Studios, uh, Miramax uh, Movie Studios, ABC, right? So you think ABC is going to run a story contrary to, you know, talking about, um, I don't know, if somebody's protesting the latest Marvel movie for some reason, you know, ABC will tend to filter uh, News Corporation owns Fox, Wall Street Journal, New York Post, Comcast, NBC, MSNBC, My Internet Company, right? So it's, you know, these these corporations are, the news outlets are part of a large corporate structure. There's uh, not a whole lot of, inter, you know, independent media, right? PBS and NPR are the only ones that are funded by the government, which, again, may or may not be a good thing, Um they're probably not going to run stories calling for decreases in government funding. Right? Like, let's, let's uh, cut back the federal government by 50%. Probably not going to be run by PBS or NPR. So, um, so technology. This is a computer science class. So let's get to the technology side of things. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the internet kind of exploded the world of media because suddenly people could share news with each other independent of the gatekeepers. Right, so the, the media has traditionally functioned as a gatekeeper. If there's a story and they don't want to run it, the story dies and nobody knows about it. Right? Yeah, sure, five hundred thousand people were exposed to poison gas. They don't run the story, nobody in America knows about it. Right? And by nobody I mean, you know, obviously some people do, but it effectively stops cultural awareness of certain facts from happening. And so by gatekeeping, by filtering certain facts, the narrative could be controlled, right? So um, the the perception on 
on topics and things like that. If people aren't informed, if they don't have the facts, they can't make they can't make informed decisions on a topic. And so, um, and so with internet news now being um, really bigger than traditional media, people can share stories and pass them from person to person outside of this filtering effect of the mainstream media. And if there's enough noise on the internet about an issue, it's like, why are you not talking about this? And um, it can actually flack, you know, it can actually put pressure on the mainstream media to cover a story uh, after um, enough people on the internet are talking about it. And, and that's what we've seen. In fact, uh, some uh, news organizations just have people that watch social media and just talk about what people are talking about on social media, right? So, um, I typically do this exercise. I might still do it. Uh, so come up with a story that has been suppressed by the mainstream media. But for now, we've got Flappy Bird due on Friday and we've got your essay due next week, your big essay. So I'm not going to give you this exercise right now, but maybe just post on to Discord right now. Uh, any, any story that you know about that has been ignored or filtered by the media in America. So go ahead and do that right now. And if you're watching at home, yeah, come online, post onto Discord. Some some news story that is important, you know, not like dog goes missing, you know, like um, some story that is like, you know, pretty important that people should know about that just gets neglected. Um, hmm. Say so within the last 40 or 50 years, you know, it's so not history per se, not ancient history. But like, um, you know, the, the world's a big place and there's a lot of topics that we can talk about. There's a lot of topics that um, are really important. And, and there's just, you know, let's say there's a thousand things happening today that are really important. The media will pick like a couple, you know, to talk about. And then the other media will be, oh, they're talking about that. I'm going to talk about it too. And then, so rather than one media outlet talking about three or four and another talking about three or four and another talking about three and four, what happens is they all consolidate and they talk about just the same issues. And then they tend to run those same issues over and over again. Like when Malaysian airlines went missing, um, CNN ran daily updates on the missing Malaysian Airlines flight for like 200 days, right? And they would talk about it. And there was nothing, right? The thing had gone missing. Update. No news. And they would somehow squeeze five minutes out of it. You know, and every day they're running breaking news on the Malaysian Airlines flight 370 or whatever. Um, yeah, nothing's been found. But they don't say that, right? Did they find it? And then people tune in and then, yeah, and then nothing, right? Like CNN was absolutely, in my mind, disgusting during that time period because they kept, you know, interviewing the, the families of the people who lost the people, their, their, their friends and family on the, on the flight and kept making it seem as if something had been found over and over again, getting people's hopes up. And there was nothing. It was, it was really kind of disgusting behavior, in my opinion. At least. Supreme Court ruling about how churches are allowed to open. Yeah, that's pretty important, I'd say. <clears throat> uh, Cuomo's handling of the COVID-19 virus leading to old people dying in nur uh, nursing homes. Um, uh, but his sexual scandals were covered instead. I would say that Fox has been running a lot on um, the, the nursing home issue. And that's, that's again, one of the things that I've said, like, you, you, you know, it doesn't matter really what your political um, alignment is yourself. It's important to, act, to, to pay attention to all these different sources of information because they will run stories, especially when it's political like that, right? Fox will run something like, oh, we got, we got dirt on Andrew Cuomo. We're running it, right? Whereas CNN's like, uh, yeah, we're just not going to talk about the, uh, yeah, anything negative, you know? Um, and so one of the ways around politically motivated filters is to pay attention to left-wing and right-wing media because the right-wing people will focus on stories that 
make the left look bad and the left focus on stories that make the right wing look bad. And so you can kind of get more stories and more things that are happening that way. But again, this is all sort of politically oriented stuff, right? There's a lot of things like what's going on with Richard Stallman right now. It's not, doesn't have any political impact. So, so it doesn't matter if it's left or right wing, they're just both filtering. Teenage boy was killed. Um, professor, does this work? Inequality kills gap between richest and poorest Americans largest in 50 years. Sure. Uh, missing media. T top 10 stories from Project Censored 2020. So, um, so you found a website that is uh, highlighting news stories that the media are not covering. It's almost cheating, I would say. <laughs> to do that. I'm just going to go onto a website that covers censored news. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, that's happening in America only. No, 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 no. Worldwide. It, it, if American, if American news are bad about what's happening in America, think about how bad American news are covering world topics, right? Like what's going on in uh, the Ukraine right now with Russia applying pressure to them, right? Uh, what's going on in Japan with the Olympics, right? Um, a friend of mine in Tokyo sent me the rules for the volunteers yesterday, and it's just like, put on a mask, wash your hands, don't get sick. We're not going to give you a vaccine, despite you being in close contact with the athletes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, what's, what's up with China these days? You know, there's a lot of stuff going on with China. Taiwan. Right, so Dogecoin, yeah, coronavirus variants. Um, <clears throat> yeah, India, India is, uh, India is, I think, actually making news right now, uh, with how bad the coronavirus thing is going in India. Uh, so that's actually, I think, making na American national news. Um, <clears throat> because, uh, there, there's been a lot that's been going on with India and their coronavirus coverage. And I've seen a lot of that in the, in the news recently. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that was necessarily under, underreported. So what do you, what do you guys, uh, think? Do you, uh, first of all, do you guys agree with Chomsky? Because my, my, my own personal take on it is like, I kind of agree with him and kind of don't. So I don't want you to think that, um... Anytime we, we do anything in this class um, that I'm necessarily giving you my view on things because one of the marks of an educated person is that you can entertain notions without necessarily holding them. I think Socrates who said that. Um, and so I'm reporting Noam Chomsky. Not to be confused with Noam Chomsky, which was a <laughs> an ape or something that they uh, trained to, I think, speak or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So do you guys agree or disagree with, with Noam Chomsky? Got two minutes left. Just toss me your, toss me your opinions. Like you're not, you're not going to offend me if you disagree with them. Cause like I've already kind of hinted to you where I disagree with them. Like the war on terror thing, like, uh, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't let my own personal views color, um, the way I report things, you know, the, um, yeah, I guess with the war on terror I did, but I, I, I try to be, I try to be pretty fair to the, um, the ideas that I report, you know, which moral system, which ethical system I use, which theory of truth I use. I'm going to, I'm going to try and defend all of them when I'm reporting on them. You know what I mean? That's what I think. Um, it's the ethical obligation of a professor middle towards more agree middle, I guess, to make up for the almost cheating. You're, it's not, I'm giving a hard time. dude. Um, lead pipes in the U S um, Flint. Yeah. Yeah. Flint's, um, yeah. The whole situation there with the lead pipes has been pretty famous. Got to go another class. 
Yeah, we're, we're done for today. So uh, We will uh, continue our discussion, maybe of the media, maybe of other things. Um, but this is, this is basically our day to talk about the media. So if you're at home watching this, uh, again, just post some sort of a news story that you think has been neglected, that has been underreported by the U.S. media, and um, if you agree or disagree with uh, Noam Chomsky, okay. you're not going to offend me no matter what you say. You could say I completely disagree. You know, I think the media is fair, and you know, like you're you're, you're really not going to offend me no matter what you say, except you know if you make a personal attack against a classmate or something. So always be nice and respectful. And we'll do fine. Okay. That's it, guys. I will see you on Friday. Have fun with Flappy Bird and uh, work on those essays. All right. Peace out.